follow because the entries in these books weren't actually made by notaries like Leonardo da Vinci's father. They were actually made by the priests in the church. But I think I have found her. Here she is. This is wonderful. Ooh, I've got a shiver down my spine. Lisa, Donna, Fudi, Francesco del Giocondo. So, Lisa, the wife of Francesco del Giocondo, Mori, died on the 15th of July, 1542. Just... I think what I love about this is this is truth. You know, what could be more true than the record of somebody's death? She was a real person. She was a real person. And there's one other sentence in this entry which my friend Palanti didn't mention. It says that she was buried in Sant'Orsola. He told me that. But what he didn't say is this last sentence, tolsa tutto il capito. Four words. She took with her the whole capitolo. What that means is that her body was followed by the whole body of the church of San Lorenzo. So what is conjured up by this is a very, very grand funeral. And for this brief moment, in July 1542, she was a very, very important person in the life of the city. Everybody in Florence would have known that Mona Lisa had passed away. A spectacular funeral. Dozens of canons, chaplains and clerics, the whole Del Giacondo clan, walking with Lisa's coffin. Francesco had died five years earlier, but he made sure he provided for all this pomp and ceremony in his will, where she's described as his beloved, faithful wife. Lisa del Giacondo was laid to rest in the now ruined convent of Sant'Orsola. Beyond here, we can't follow her, though we've learned a lot. Leonardo definitely knew Lisa, definitely painted her portrait. But if one riddle's been answered, there's still another mystery to solve. How can we be certain that Leonardo's portrait of Lisa and the portrait in the Louvre are one and the same? So what are the facts? According to Vasari, Leonardo painted Lisa smiling in Florence. Vespucci's marginal notes confirm that it happened in 1503. The picture in the Louvre shows a woman smiling. So far, so good. But other things don't add up. Vasari describes eyebrows. But the Louvre portrait doesn't have eyebrows. Vasari tells us Leonardo painted Lisa for Francesco del Giocondo. But Francesco never owned the portrait we now call the Mona Lisa. Leonardo had it with him when he died. Most troubling of all is an eyewitness account written by a man called Antonio de Beatis. He was actually shown the picture that's now in the Louvre by Leonardo himself at the end of his life. Leonardo said he'd been asked to paint this portrait not by Francesco del Giocondo, but by someone completely different a noble patron, Giuliano de' Medici. It simply doesn't make sense. It's almost as if we might be talking about different paintings. So I'm beginning to wonder whether it's not possible Leonardo did paint two versions of the same painting on several occasions. I'm beginning to wonder if it's not possible that he did indeed finish his portrait of the Mona Lisa here in Florence, that he did indeed give it to Francesco del Giocondo, and that the portrait of Mona Lisa in Paris is a second version. Is it possible that there might be more than one Mona Lisa? The idea is not as strange as you might think. 
Leonardo did habitually revisit the same subject more than once. I've come to Singapore to see for the first time a picture that might actually be Leonardo's first version of the painting. It's owned by an anonymous consortium of businessmen and is currently locked away deep in the bowels of a state-of-the-art high-security storage facility. So could this be the first Mona Lisa? I've come 7,000 miles to see you. Blimey. The background's, you might almost say, a kind of roughing in. But the face, huh? The face is really something. She's younger, she's smiling. I think there's a lot to be said for first impressions. And uh, <laughs> the first impression when I came in was, I, I did well not to jump backwards in, in shock. It's too good, in my opinion, for any of the other school of Leonardo painters. Very dangerous things like this, They're very dangerous to say this is definitely painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Well, I can't say that, but I think it's not beyond the realms of possibility that this is the picture that Francesco del Giocondo took. And then the Leonardo goes off, paints another picture based on the memory of this picture. And that's the Mona Lisa we know in the Louvre. It's very teasing, that smile, isn't it? Very teasing. This version of the Mona Lisa first hit the headlines in 1914. British art dealer Hugh Blaker bought it from a private family collection and was convinced he'd stumbled across an early Leonardo. He kept it in his Isleworth studios and it became known as the Isleworth Mona Lisa. One thing in its favour was its similarity to this pencil sketch copy of the Mona Lisa, done in Florence in 1504 by Leonardo's contemporary Raphael, which seems to show how the painting looked in its original state. Yet after a century of supporters, detractors and different owners, opinion on the Isleworth painting is still divided. One man who is convinced that Leonardo painted two Mona Lisas is Jean-Pierre Isbouts. He was so impressed by the Isleworth portrait, he wrote a book about it. So what would lead you to think that the Isleworth picture was indeed painted in 1503? What is to say that it wasn't painted in 1553? Well, and I don't know about you, but when you talk about a copy, usually a copy tries to imitate the original. This is not a copy. There are so many different things about this particular Isleworth version that do not appear in the Louvre version. Let's take one example. The columns. The portrait is framed by two robust Doric columns. Why do we know that those columns existed in 1503 and not later on? Because there is Raphael. He makes a sketch. And what do we have on both sides? We have the columns that appear in the Isleworth. They do not appear in the Louvre version. So let's talk about the uh, record written by De Beatis, the secretary to Cardinal D'Aragon, who visited Leonardo in 1516. Which, which is seriously puzzling. Which is seriously puzzling. But here is, here we have an eyewitness account. Here they are in the room with Leonardo. Uh, and he says, yeah, this, this was done at the request of Giuliano de Medici. Instigazione. Instigazione. I think what he was doing at this time is give Giuliano credit. Giuliano bailed Leonardo out when Leonardo was without 
a mentor, panelist. And that's when Leonardo, because of the patronage and the financial support of Giuliano, finds the time to create this new meditation, if you will, the Louvre version. So your explanation would be, well, here we are. Two different explanations, but then that's not so weird if you think there are two different pictures. Exactly. Jean-Pierre firmly believes this could be Leonardo's first Mona Lisa, done for husband Francesco. But if so, why would it be unfinished? Well, we know Leonardo was slow and Francesco was impatient. So perhaps he just snatched it away from Leonardo once his beloved Lisa's face was complete. A barrage of scientific tests have been carried out on this tantalizing picture. The canvas was carbon dated to around the right period. Multiple tiny paint samples are consistent with the paints Leonardo used. X-ray, infrared and ultraviolet scans have found nothing to disprove it as an early Mona Lisa. But that's the problem. All that conventional tests can do is rule out a possible Leonardo. What about positive confirmation? An eminent scientist based in San Diego, California, has been looking for a solution. Hello. Good to see you, Andrew. Dr. John Asmus is a well-respected nuclear physicist and a pioneer in the analysis of historic paintings. He's one of very few who've been allowed to examine the Louvre Mona Lisa. And that's why the owners of the Isleworth Mona Lisa tracked him down. I started receiving phone calls from a series of, uh, of attorneys in Switzerland, and they wanted me to look at a painting. And finally, they, we found that I was going to be on a train from Milan to Geneva, and they asked me to get off the train in Lausanne and take a look at their painting. And so they met me at the train station, and they popped the bonnet of, a, of an automobile, and uh, there was a Mona Lisa in, in, in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and the attorney asked me, do you think this Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo? And my exact <laughs> words were, how would I know? <laughs> so uh, I got out my Instamatic camera and took a photograph of the painting in the trunk. And it was that image that I com then compared with the Louvre Mona Lisa. A few years ago, Dr. Asmus developed a new test to authenticate paintings by Rembrandt. It compares the subtle distribution of light and shadow, measured as histograms, to isolate an artist's unique way of painting. I think it's a, a way of trying to quantify the artist's eye. Every artist has certain uh, effects that he's trying to accomplish. And we use Rembrandt as a test case and the results were rather encouraging. We came up with some general rules as to how Rembrandt did his blending and his selection of, of pigments. So I tried that, that same technique on the Isleworth Mona Lisa and, and comparing it with the Louvre Mona Lisa. And I was, I was stunned. The correlation between those two histograms was 99%, stronger than it was between any histograms of any of the Rembrandt self-portraits that we've looked at. How, how amazing. This demonstrates that the technique for blending light and shade in each face appears uncannily similar. John plans to build a much bigger database of Leonardo works with which to compare them. His results are impressive. But there's something still troubling me. I would love to believe that that softly emerging face coming out of darkness really is young Mona Lisa. I'd love to believe that. But at the moment, for me, it's that too good to be true syndrome. It's a little bit too good. It's troubling when I look at that chart that they've done of where they've taken the paint samples from. They've taken the paint samples from everywhere except that beguiling face, which is the most compelling part of the whole picture. It's the part that makes you think, yes, 
This could be the young Mona Lisa. I'm just wondering whether it's possible that some very skillful, care.